So for patient education, uh, we want to teach them to achieve and maintain a healthy weight, um, encourage reduction of salt and sodium intake, and increase the level of physical activity, um, avoiding tobacco products, limiting alcohol intake, and choosing a heart healthy diet are all going to be um, education targeted towards those with coronary artery disease. So the goals are to reduce the triglycerides, reduce the LDL, remember we want to raise the HDL, and we want to control the blood pressure. So myocardial ischemia is when the demand for myocardial oxygen exceeds the ability of the coronary arteries to supply the heart with oxygen and often results in angina or chest pain. So angina pectoris could either be stable in which case the chest pain is predictable and it's directly related to the amount of exertion. Um, so this does not occur at rest. And usually after you get the chest pain um, and you're exerting yourself and you sit down and you relax, um, this pain will subside. In unstable angina, it is unpredictable chest pain and it occurs during rest. So um, in this case, the, the person may have been out um, doing something a little strenuous and feels some chest pain and then tries to sit down and relax and the pain continues to occur at rest. Or somebody could just be resting and doing nothing strenuous and the chest pain will come unpredictably. And we call this unstable angina. There's also another type called vasospastic or Prinz metal. This is a condition of spasm of the coronary arteries and it is not associated with atherosclerosis. So some of the clinical manifestations of coronary artery disease um, include acute coronary syndrome. So in this case, um, someone may say, I'm having chest pain, I feel like an elephant is standing on my chest and I cannot catch my breath. So is this person having um, angina or are they actually having unstable angina and developing an MI? Um, and so is it an episode of angina or myocardial infarction? So um, as soon as we find out that someone is having some chest pain, we want to um, find out what the quality is. Um, we want to know what the precipitating events were that may have caused the pain. We want to know the, the quality of the pain or discomfort. Is it sharp? Is it stabbing? Is it throbbing? Uh, we want to know if it radiates to other parts of the body. And we want to know the severity of the pain. Is it moderate? Is it severe? Um, and timing. Um, does it come and go or is it continuous? We also would like to know things like um, what makes the pain better um, and what seems to aggravate the pain. So um, the clinical manifestations we might see during an MI um, are shortness of breath, um, pallor, um, which is kind of ghostly white skin, or cyanosis, which is bluish tint to the skin. They may have a feeling of apprehension or impending doom, and they have pain which may or may not radiate. They may present with diaphoresis or sweating. They may have nausea, vomiting, and if they were hooked up to a telemetry or a rhythm strip, you may see some arrhythmias. So what do we do after someone presents with chest pain? And, and any of the symptoms that we've just mentioned. Uh, we do some blood tests. We look at some biochemical markers because damage to the heart muscle causes the release of enzymes and proteins. 
So creatinine kinase, or CKMB, is an enzyme, and it's specific for myocardial injury. And so this rise is four to six hours after the injury to the heart, and it peaks in about 18 to 24 hours. So troponin is another one of these cardiac markers. It is a myocardial muscle protein, and it's released into the circulation after myocardial injury. There's usually none circulating, so the presence of troponin is significant, and it's usually detectable one hour following injury to the heart muscle. Another cardiac marker is brain natriuretic peptide, or BNP. This is a protein that's produced by the heart and blood vessels. And it can rise following damage to the heart. And the action actually helps ease the strain on the heart. BNP helps the body eliminate fluids and relaxes the blood vessels. It also funnels sodium into the urine. Um, a BNP is usually more of an indicator of congestive heart failure. Um, and so a BNP level greater than 100 um, can be an indication uh, for heart failure. So immediate treatment of an MI includes um, the acronym MONA. So the morphine um, helps control the patient's pain and it also decreases the preload and afterload of the heart. We want to give oxygen uh, via nasal cannula uh, to help support uh, the oxygen and breathing. And nitroglycerin uh, is a medication that we often give to help dilate the blood vessels. We will also give aspirin, um, which helps the platelets become less sticky. So diagnostic testing. Um, we may get a chest x-ray, we may get an EKG or electrocardiogram, we may do a halter monitor, an echocardiogram, a stress test, or a cardiac catheterization. And we're going to talk about each one of these. So a chest x-ray um, will be attained to look at the size of the heart, whether or not there's any fluid in the lungs, um, or widening of the mediastinum. And so an EKG um, is another test that may be ordered. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at cardiac muscle cells before we talk about the EKG. Each separate cardiac muscle cell can repeatedly contract or beat by itself at its own pace. But it's important that we want the cells to work together. We don't want the cells to be beating on their own. We want synchrony, where all the cells work together. So there's a conduction pathway. Certain specialized heart muscles help conduct the signal and maintain synchrony. So the sinoatrial node is located in the right atrium, and it is referred to as the pacemaker of the heart. And it is what um, begins this electrical signal. Next, the signal um, goes to the atrioventricular node, also located in the right atrium. After that, it goes down the septum into the bundle branches um, and through the rest of the heart. So the sympathetic neuron um, is what increases our heart rate um, through the hormone nor norepinephrine. And here we see a sympathetic neuron stimulating the heart um, to fire at the SA node. Here we see a parasympathetic neuron, and acetylcholine is the um, chemical involved in parasympathetic control, and this decreases the heart rate. So this signals the SA node um, to actually not fire as frequently.